This is Kuratake White Ink, and this stuff is seriously magic. I'm so excited to show you all the things it can do, and it can do not one thing, but many really exciting things that are better than I have ever seen with any white kind of painting thing like uh, white ink or white gouache whenever you need to fix something or get white fluffy cloud effects or so many things. It's used by comic book illustrators apparently and I just heard about this on one of my Facebook groups and I have been able to do the most amazing fixes with it and I'm so excited to show it to you all. Let's take a look. So I'm going to do this demonstration with this particular painting, which I didn't paint with watercolor paint. I painted this with Chinese calligraphy ink. I was just practicing my fluffed out black cat paintings that uh, I like to do. And this is a painting that I did last week. So this is a brand new one. So as I go, I'll also, also tell you kind of what I'm doing with this technique. But the real star of the show is going to be this white ink that I'm going to use later to fix this black cat when the wet and wet technique gets a little out of control. And it was so amazing. I was so excited. And before we get started, welcome back to my channel where you learn not just the how, but the why of watercolor. So you move along your painting journey a lot faster. So be sure to subscribe. And if you want to learn from me more in depth, I do have a Patreon, but I just wanted to share this with you all real quick. Anyway, I'm using Chinese calligraphy ink and I'm getting everything wet. So this is going to be a wet and wet technique that I use to do my fluffed out black kitties, which was born back when I had a black cat and I wanted to paint her fluffiness. And I learned so much about painting black fluffy cats and watercolor with this wet and wet technique. And it's super fun. I just learned something new about this particular ink and why it furs out like my beloved lamp black paint does, which I've done whole videos on the magic that is lamp black watercolor paint. But I just found out that this Chinese calligraphy ink is made from the same process. It's used, it's made from soot, from uh, burning oil, apparently. So that's why this furs out exactly the same way that Daniel Smith and other brands of lamp black fur out. It's made from the same soot uh, type material. And when you paint it wet and wet like this, it furs out. Just a side note and note that whenever I make videos, you're always going to get a lot of bonus tips that you didn't know you needed until you watch my videos. So that is my promise when you watch my videos. I always have juicy little good tidbits. So here I'm just trying to fix where it fluffed out too much. I had my paper too wet and now I'm trying to dab it up. And at this point, at this exact moment, I had not realized that I had a tool in my arsenal that would save this painting. <laughs> so I was like, well, this painting's done for. But anyway, see how this fluffed out too much? I was not aware yet that I would totally be able to fix this. It was going to be amazing. I've never seen anyone talk about this in the watercolor world on how you can use this ink to fix paintings like this in such a huge way. But I got everything wet again, so I would have a nice wet and wet soft edge along that side of the cat. It wouldn't be furred out, but at least it would be soft. And I have added water to my Kuratake ink, so it's a little bit more workable. But still, even though I added water to it, look how well it covered this side of the cat. And it's just, it's just kind of amazing. And as it dries, it does not have much of a drying shift, meaning a drying shift is when watercolor paint or whatever you're working with uh, lightens up or darkens. And in the case of like white gouache, if I would have done this with white gouache, it would have lightened up a lot and you could still see the oops underneath. When this dries, you're not going to see much of that mistake. So this is not all that this ink can do though. I want you to stay tuned because I'm going to do some more experiments seeing, well, uh, okay, so it covers up bad mistakes, but then can you paint back over it? Next, I want to show you some of my experiments that I did with this ink to see just what it could do, tested out its sea legs. So let's watch and see what I do with these experiments with this ink to see what it can do. All right, I am going to step up my little test with this white ink kuretake. And I'm going to pull out some just student grade 
hippie crafter paper that I love. It's paper I can, I really can ac accomplish a lot with this paper. Let's draw a rough square and we're gonna fill that square up and I'm just gonna really put quite a bit kind of thick on here like I would ground because I wanna see how much can I paint on it. By the way, those ghosts over there, I painted with this Kuretake ink. And I also made mist. I did a short on how I painted mist using this right. Kuretake ink. And then another experiment that we need to do is, Kura, uh, I spelled it wrong already. This is supposed to be an E, Kuretake. Then I'm gonna put some pretty thick red paint in this square. I believe this is cadmium. What a gorgeous color. I never use it though, because it's too chalky for my taste, but it'll be good to practice this technique. All right, we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna paint on top of these. I just thought of another experiment I wanna do, which is cauliflower. All right, so I'm gonna take a highly cauliflowering paint. Say I wanna make a winter scene. So this is thalo blue, which is a very um, cauliflower prone paint. Say I'm trying to paint a winter scene, right? And just a side note, what I'm about to do paint into a wet blue paint is exactly what you would do to paint mist or fog with this ink. I'm really going through this stuff. I probably am using too much of it. But I'm just experimenting. I want to see what happens if I put little kind of thick. What if I put little snow bunches? What if I paint that along the edge? And then what happens? So yeah, this is perfect for snow painting, splattering into wet blue paint to get snow effects. It would be gorgeous. What if we made a snowman? Let's even up our snowman. I'm gonna bring back the base of my snowman by putting more. If I would have done this on better paper, it would have done, it would have done a lot more fun things. And I probably should try it on better paper because Look at the little, I mean, how cool a fur would that be? That's with ink. That has some possibilities, folks. I wanna try something else I just thought of. I'm gonna paint another, kind of like, you know how you use ground to resize paper? Can we use this like to resize paper? I'm so curious. For those of you who don't know what sizing is, and why it's an issue and how to tell if you have bad sizing. I do have a video about that and I'll link that here. And one of the ways you can resize your paper is to paint uh, watercolor ground onto it. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. This isn't really doing much because I think it's because of the paper though. Because it did fur out, look at that piece of paper that I didn't record on and it furred out and fluffed out so cool. So I do think this will fluff out on better paper. Let's pretend I wanted to fix something. Say this is too red. And I also got beautiful mist with it in my Halloween painting. I have shorts about my Halloween painting, so be sure to check that out. And look, I got a soft edge on that ink by re-wetting it while it was still damp. There's so many possibilities with this ink. It's really exciting. Look at it throwing out. Ah! I want to do my experiment with lamp black. So I'm going to get this all wet as if it was watercolor paper. And then I'm going to get my lamp black cream consistency. I have whole videos about lamp black and how it furs out and it's so magical. And I will link that here and it will not take you out of the video. It will just queue it up for you to watch later. And this is not furring out like I would like, but you have to have just the right paper and the planets have to align for it to fur out right. And I was just hopeful. So no, this white ink doesn't do everything watercolor paper does, of course, but there is a lot of possibilities with it. 
but this fur out effect definitely didn't happen on this and I wouldn't expect it to because it really needs to be on good paper like Arsh cold press. Some actually cellulose papers do fur out well, fluid cold press watercolor paper with the red label furs out nicely, although it buckles a lot because it's a cheaper paper, but it's not gonna fur out on this Kuretake ink. But look how I can paint on top of this ink. It's crazy. I could have a whole layer of paint underneath that white ink and you can repaint on it. So this would be perfect for little fixes. All right, so here I'm trying to paint very roughly a human face in profile just to see what it looks like and how much of a watercolor look I can get once I'm painting on this ink and not directly on the paper. I was just doing a little ornament painting and I messed it up and I used Daniel Smith brand ground, watercolor ground, to paint over my mistake. Then you let it dry and then you paint on it as if it's watercolor paper and that worked, but it kind of had a rough surface and this ink is a lot smoother, like a hot press surface. I think this white ink would have worked a lot better. It would have given me a smoother surface to work on, but I'm getting pretty good results painting wet into wet on top of this pretty thickly ap applied white ink. It is official. This is a total game changer. I have bought three more little jars of this just to have. And this is akin to the most amazing thing I probably learned in the last five years, which is James Gurney's Rembrandt windmill principle. I will link to that video here. That is a really amazing thing that I learned about. Uh, how to compose paintings, but this little uh, jar of ink is going to be so useful. I'm really excited to play with it a lot more. That is a real rough looking person, but the point is I was able to get nuances and um, wet and wet blending effects on top of this ink. That was the main thing I was trying to see. How do colors blend on top of this ink? Can I get smooth blends? And it looks like the answer is yes. And until you really try it in a real world painting situation, you don't know, but the results that I got with the black cat fix were really exciting Be because I was able to get that soft wet on wet edge that was kind of furry looking. I mean, that was amazing. All right, thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial. I am really excited about this ink. You will see it in future tutorials. Uh, when I have something I need to fix, or I have some fluffy clouds maybe I want to play with, or some fog. It's going to be fun to play with this. So I hope you really enjoyed this, and I will link to this product on my supply list on my website. You can go to rachelstudio.com slash supply list, and there you will find a whole huge list of things that I love. They are affiliate links, so I do make a little money, but it doesn't add to the cost uh, for you, I did find wildly differing prices on Amazon for this Kuretake ink. So definitely shop around, even though you can use my link to get to the product and see what it looks like. But do shop around. There are wildly <laughs> differing prices on this product on the Internet. So um, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed spending a little time with you. I hope this is exciting to you like it is to me. I'm very excited about this. And be sure to subscribe to learn not just the how, but the why of watercolors so you move along your painting journey a lot faster. And I'll see you next time. Now go watercolor your world. Bye, everybody.